the fury is burning, apparently. And while this may be awkward to talk about, let's talk about it. Hey Charles, it's everyone. How are you today? Before we hop into the flames and fury of today's chat, I love this internet browser and I'm so happy they reached out to me. Opera GX is a special version of the Opera browser built specifically for gamers and it has a mobile version that can be connected to the desktop browser. I love this browser because it is packed with lots of great features from forced dark mode to sidebar social media integration to etc etc but to zero in on just a couple cool features, the GX control that you can see here helps enhance your PC's performance performance when gaming with your browser open and gets rid of lag which is great if like me you are gaming or making videos but want to keep a whole bunch of browser tabs open as you can limit the CPU, RAM, and network bandwidth that the browser can use. And two, another cool feature is the GX Corner in which Opera personally curates free games, the best deals, the newest releases, and breaking game news as well as a release calendar of upcoming video games where you can also switch platforms like this all in one easily accessible place. Very clean, very useful, I love it. And I just wanted to mention this as a bonus, but the browser's background music that reacts to your browsing activity is honestly super relaxing and worth experiencing alone. So give Opera GX a shot from the link below. I think you'll love it as much as I do. Thank you to Opera GX for sponsoring this video and let's hop into today's chat. Good golly, Miss Molly. This chat is going to start where you probably expect it to start, but it is going to end where you do not expect it to end. And to begin from the beginning, the other week I was a shirtless, sweaty mess researching fictional monsters on the internet as I usually am, when a clickbaity video celebrating how Japan was slamming Scarlet and Violet over its character designs popped up in my feed, referencing various comments from a Japanese website as proof. I immediately recognized that the comment screenshots were taken from Anige Sokuho, one of the many Matome websites that that are a fairly unique characteristic of Japanese online culture. The word matome loosely translates to summary or curated, and a matome website is basically a website that repackages online discussion threads and blogs into its own articles. There are plenty of good Japanese matome websites out there like Hachimakiko or Pokerin, but generally speaking, matome websites have a reputation as being hot pockets for misinformation, Japanese nationalism of the not-so-fun variety, and haterade-drenched takes on even the most innocuous topics. Because misinformation plus polarization plus outrage equals cold hard cash. The specific Anige Sokuho article on Scarlet and Violet referenced in the aforementioned video is titled, Pokemon's new characters are smeared in political correctness, which sounds about as hyperbolic as 90% of YouTube titles. But I decided to check it out and read through the tasting platter of comments curated for the article as well as the hundreds upon hundreds of comments on the article itself. Some of the comments were genuinely funny or insightful. Some were hateful enough to give your mama's magmar the shivers, and on the whole, it was exactly what you would expect from an otaku-oriented curation website designed to trade sensationalism for sweet, sweet online ad dollars. And I'd actually seen an article in the same vein months earlier on a different Matome website, so initially I left it at that. I poured a second cup of coffee, shaved my armpits, continued with my day, the days passed, my sketch beard grew, it grew some more, I shaved it, and then I thought. While one, I hadn't really considered the character designs in that light, and two, never mind the character designs, all I really want from the next Pokemon game is a town a little more bumpin' than an empty shopping mall. Well, I thought it might be worth wading through the swamp to see if there were some interesting points of discussion buried beneath what most fans would probably write off as your typical unwarranted whiny internet rage. And there were some interesting points. So the plan today is to leap into the abyss, translating and discussing comments from Japanese Pokemon fans as well as Japanese Pokemon non-fans, it would seem, as we drill through the anti podikore crust towards something that is actually worth thinking about. And as always, it's going to be a good time, so kindly subscribe to join the expedition, and let's excavate some juicy nuggets. P.S. Don't worry, I filtered out the nasty stuff. Firstly, I do get the sense that this kind of topic makes for a real hot potato of a discussion, but I don't think it would have to be such a hot potato, or rather, it could be a cool potato, if people didn't come at it like drunk dads LARPing the Ragnarok. So let's try to avoid stripping into our Tarzans and going buck wild in the comments as we open the mic to this specific segment of Japanese commenters speaking to the perceived Podikore cast of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet. We will begin with a sample of comments from the ragier end of the spectrum, bearing in mind that I've already filtered out 
any inappropriate or heinous comments to keep the video viewer friendly. Well, here we go. The proportion of politically correct characters is so high that it makes me shudder. A great gathering of political correctness. Bring her back. Even the NPCs are politically correct, lol. Political correctness is seriously harmful. The people who complain about this stuff don't buy games to begin with. Why do you have to sell to them and worry about public opinion? This is just a small sampling of hundreds of comments, most of which were a bit more colorful in their language. But with that said, the general thrust of thought among these commenters appears to be something like this. One, the creative direction of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has been forced by the West's current socio-political environment and two, that this is harmful to the quality of the games in some way. Whether or not this is true are questions that I'll leave to you to decide the answers to, but before I offer some of my own food for thought, for good measure, here are a few comments I dug out of the article that present some fairly balanced and contrasting viewpoints. In the past, they've put together something cute with an international flavor, but this time it feels a bit corny and overbearingly politically correct. Aren't you just labeling your discomfort with unfamiliar feeling designs as political correctness? What's so politically correct about it. It's just that a lot of the characters look Spanish because it's set in Spain. I don't get what's so politically correct about the characters. Do you all really think that any character design deviating from the strong man with short hair or ladylike woman in a skirt archetype is influenced by political correctness? If you keep going down that road, you're going to end up with a lot of similar characters in a long-running series like this. The bottom half are what they are, but aren't the others pretty cute? I don't think it's a matter of political correctness, just a matter of iffy designs. I think that's a pretty good cut of the comments out of the article, and it was interesting to contemplate these perspectives, as before reading these Matome articles, my thoughts on the cast of Scarlet and Violet were basically that one, some look like outlandish anime characters, but others like generic me avatars, two, I am not sure if that is Todoroki's hair or a glob of toothpaste, three, it's Giga Chad, and four, I think I will be buying Pokemon Scarlet. Thank you very much. To be honest, I think we are just at the point where people get so wrapped up in their tribal discourse that they will look at a bowl of spaghetti and perceive it as politically correct or anti-politically correct. But to speak to one recurring point that I saw in the criticisms, I do have to agree that on the whole the designs look from a bit bland to kind of all over the place. And perhaps that is just due to the somewhat less stylized, somewhat more uncanny character models, but I do kind of feel like half the time I am looking at characters from a Pokemon game, and the other half of the time I am looking at people's PlayStation home avatars. To speak to the somewhat ragier comments from the article, I personally think that many of the designs simply look uninteresting rather than politically correct. But as I was perusing through the comments a second time over, I noticed another theme that perhaps better illustrates what is really bothering this particular subset of Japanese internet posters. Something that is actually worth thinking about. That is to say that the outrage at the perceived political correctness from Western culture that is leaking into the Pokemon games, whether that incursion be real or imagined or whether it even matters, may conceal a fear of losing something. As two fairly vexed commenters put it, the whole thing smells of butter. It's as if they are brown-nosing foreign countries and turning their backs on Japan. Being conscious of the foreign market is a good thing, but why is it that every time, just like this, everything about the games down to their very soul is taken over by foreign countries? Japanese games are becoming less and less Japanese, aren't they? At least from my perspective, this viewpoint appears to underpin a lot of the outrage expressed in the comments of the article, and it raises a good question. In its quest to appeal to an international audience, has Pokemon's Japanese-ness been eroded over the years? And if so, is that a good thing, a bad thing, or simply just a thing? When I first played the Pokemon games and watched the Pokemon anime back in the 1990s, it felt really, really different from anything on the market at the time. And while we can attribute much of that to the creative genius of Satoshi Tajiri and his team, the connection of this creative genius to the culture in which it was born is obvious in everything from the Gashapon-inspired Pokeballs, to the locations and architecture of the first four regions, to the numerous yokai-inspired Pokemon designs, to the prominent role of the bicycle in everyday life, to the pachinko-like casino setup of the early games to etc etc etc. Of course, since the very beginning, a certain degree of Pokemon's Japanese-ness has been snuffed out of the series in its overseas iterations. From changing Butsudan into Diglett statues in the games and Onigiri into donuts in the anime, to the globalization of creature names and pop culture references, to the fact that Japanese dialectical differences that enhanced the experience for Japanese audiences simply couldn't be translated into other languages. Even so, I think that the localized games have retained much of their Japanese feel over the years, but without a doubt 
out that Japanese feel certainly was stronger from generations one through four. After all, the first four regions were modeled after four major real life regions of Japan. And if you've been to Kanto, Kansai, Kyushu, or Hokkaido, you will most certainly feel the spirit of those real life regions across the in-game regions. Locations like Johto's Ekrutiak City or Hoenn's Lava Ridge Town practically ooze Japanese-ness and the world feel of Johto, Hoenn, Kanto, and Sinnoh is perhaps as comfortable to Japanese players as it is exotic to foreign players. Of course, following Diamond and Pearl, every new Pokemon region has drawn inspiration from an area of the world outside of Japan. Unova from New York, Kalos from France, Alola from Hawaii, Galar from the UK, and now Paldea from what appears to be the Iberian Peninsula. While a discussion of the quality of world building and lore in some of these regions is perhaps best set aside for another video, each of these outings certainly has brought its own international flair to the Pokemon world. And given that we already have four awesome Japan-based regions, I think that kicking off a world tour of sorts in the subsequent games has brought bundles of joy and excitement to Pokemon fans everywhere, including and perhaps especially to most Japanese fans. After all, the core appeal of the Pokemon formula was never entirely anchored to its Japanese-ness or Japan-inspired locations to begin with, but more so to the collectability, competitiveness, and community elements that make it such a fun experience to share with people. That said, it is interesting to consider how an increased emphasis on pleasing international markets and particularly the Western tastes of the era could alter the experience in a way that is alienating to some portion of Japanese fans, and perhaps makes the series less appealing to foreign fans at the same time. Especially given that we have seen the need to be global force the creative direction and resources of various anime and game companies in recent times, much to the distaste of both domestic and international fans, I can see how a perceived move towards political correctness for the sake of political correctness could potentially trigger alarm bells. To draw a comparison, it is similar to how many Hollywood movies these days are altered or built from the ground up to kowtow to the whims of one particular large foreign market, and that kind of pandering can be frustrating, laughable, and very much to the detriment of the spirit of American entertainment making, depending on who you ask. But money flows, and where exactly that money flows from has always dictated the course of mainstream entertainment. This is nothing new. But in an increasingly global world, it is very interesting to consider how this trend might erode the unique cultural feel of a country's films, games, and even Pokemon to suit the norms of foreign audiences. Personally, I couldn't be all that fussed about the character designs of Pokemon Scarlet and Violet, and as long as the world is better fleshed out than the shallow, lore-anemic regions of the past decade or so, then I will be pretty happy. But I'm curious what you think about the Scarlet and Violet cast members we have seen thus far, and if you think the games becoming less Japanese is a good thing, a bad thing, or even a thing. And with that said, stay off the haterade, be nice to people, and we will chat again soon.